Hey everybody, uh, today's topic is related to a question that I had on the channel from someone who's having difficulty with his throttle body injected uh, 305 and uh, particularly around idle speed and correct idle speed and stability. Uh, before I dive in, just uh, you know, my last video was explaining that I was having issues with kidney stones and muscle pull and so forth. And um, kidney stone is gone. I'm getting better every day. Um, still, still fighting things. So you're not going to go see me under the car this time. Uh, but I will uh, be working here. I'll, I'll give, I'm going to switch over and give you a screen show. Uh, off the laptop and try to walk through some things, some suggestions for uh, how to how to go in and uh, what what to, to look for in this idle speed issue. Um, before I get started in the detail, though, um, one of the things to think about is, you know, we we look at these systems and try to understand how to um, how to diagnose them, and it always helps to have a scan tool and a, a service manual. Um, you know, in looking at things, you know, most of the time I'm dealing with my IROC, which is a port fuel injected mass airflow system. Um, later IROCs with port fuel had um, speed density systems. And if you, you know, make the jump over to uh, a throttle body system, you know, the, there are a lot of similarities. They're not identical, certainly. But instead of having uh, eight injectors, one for each port, you have two injectors, one for each bore in the throttle body. And uh, the, the fuel pressures are different, lower on a throttle body unit. Um, but they typically run speed density systems as well. And um, I should probably stop for a second and explain what speed density is. Um, my car, older, the older models had mass airflow sensors, so they measure how much air is coming into the engine and tell the ECM, hey, you know, this is how much airflow you have, and then the ECM can go into its calibration tables and say, oh, it, you know, you've got so much speed and engine is here, so much airflow, I need to add so much fuel, right? That's its basic concept. When you get into the speed density systems that don't have mass airflow sensors, uh, they're trying to infer airflow knowing uh, things about the volumetric efficiency of the engine. In other words, if you know how many times the crankshaft is going around, how many times the pistons are going up and down, and you know what the airflow is supposed to be through the valves, and then you look at uh, the temperature, uh, air, air temperature, and you look at the manifold pressure, manifold MAP, manifold absolute pressure, uh, you can make an, an assessment of how much airflow you think you have based on the sensors. And many, many engines do that. It's a pretty good system. It makes it a little tougher if you do something like a cam change uh, because you can, with a cam change, you can change the airflow characteristics and cause some of those calibration tables to be off. But assuming for a minute that we're not doing that and you're running in a stock system, the, uh, the throttle body engines are looking at MAP and engine RPM and temperature and there may be another sensor or two I'm not thinking of at the moment but, but they're making a calculation and then assuming what your airflow must be and then they have methods with, with the oxygen sensor especially when you're in a closed loop to tune that a little bit with the block learns and so forth and make adjustments to that in, in the learning so that it runs uh, closer to uh, where you would expect it to be. So with that kind of as a start, uh, I'm going to switch over here and we're going to walk through some tables. I have a service manual uh, electronic version that I, that I have for a 91 Camaro and it has a good section on the throttle body unit. So I'm going to walk through this. Uh, second thing is uh, the person that I've been going back and forth with, um, we've been doing this in comments and it just it doesn't do it justice to, to try to do it in comments, it's, it, so hence a video. Um, one thing he noted in his last comment was that he has a, um, he has 
win ALDL and a cable so he can plug in and look at the engine parameters. He doesn't have a scan tool, but with win ALDL you should be able to get some data. And he indicated he wasn't quite sure how to read what he was getting from that. And so um, I'm also going to try to show a couple of screens here and we'll, we'll, we'll uh, talk about and go through that. So when you start working on one of these systems with, uh, with this, is, this is specifically to the throttle bodies, uh, there's something that they call a diagnostic um, uh, tr trouble uh, starting point. And so you kind of want to walk through and just kind of go through this and make sure that everything makes sense. So what you have to do here is uh, note your service engine soon light. Does it, you know, do you, do you have a steady light with the engine ignition on, engine off? If you ground the terminal jumper, the ALDL, do you get the flashing code 12? Uh, if you have a scan tool, will it display ECM data? And in this case, we'll talk about when ALDL as a substitute for a scan tool. Um, does it start? Do you have any codes? And, and from what I understand so far, the problem that the, um, the question is around is that the engine starts and idles, and the idle speed seems to be, I'll call it relatively normal. But when the car goes into gear, the idle speed goes high and doesn't want to come back down again. So the first thing from due diligence is making sure that, that these basic things operate. The manual provides um, for scan data here. Let's zoom in a little bit. Um, if you're in... Um, idling, warmed up, foot off the gas, parked neutral, closed loop, air conditioning off. Um, these are the, these are what your scan tool or your win ALDL should read, right? So, you know, it should read a coolant temp in this particular range, manifold air temperatures, map uh, pressure, um, and, and this is in KPA or volts, so it should be reading, it says about 35 KPA, throttle position in volts, and so forth down the list. Now, my 1985, I have to put it in what they called the 10K mode, which elevates the idle speed and uh, changes some of these parameters. But I think by the time you get to 1991, 1992, uh, I think you ought to be able to get data without having to do that. Not certain, but um, you know that's where we would start. Uh, here they're showing they expect idle air control and steps to be between one and 50 would be pretty much normal. So we can kind of walk down here, battery voltage. So if you have a normal operating system in park neutral, this is where you ought to be. So this is the this is what the IAC valve looks like if you haven't seen one. It's got a gasket, it's got a pintle. Uh, that pintle sets a certain distance from the gasket surface. And one of the things you want to make sure that you, do, you don't um, if you've got a used IAC valve, you don't want to push or pull on this pintle and try to move it. There is a process to adjust this the first time if it's too too far uh, too far extended on a new one, but on a used one, you don't want to push it. And they also have a note here that you don't want to soak it in any liquid cleaners or solvents. Uh, that you want to make sure that things are clean. Um, you can use a carburetor cleaner to clean the pintle surface, but you you know you don't want to soak it, so you want to be kind of careful. Um, if the air passage has heavy deposits, you can remove the throttle body and do a complete cleaning. If you happened to be installing a new one, this is where 
if you're installing a new one, you want to make sure that the pintle shape matches the old one. Uh, you want to look at the distance between the valve pintle and that gasket mounting surface. And if it's greater than 28 millimeters, you can use finger pressure to retract that pintle, but only on a new valve. And then this describes how to set it, uh, start and run the engine, turn it off, restart it, make sure that it idles correctly. Now for the problem that's being worked here, I don't believe this is an issue The the, um, it's been described that this valve's been adjusted and set and it, it should be in, in good condition. So if you want to understand though what, what this IAC looks like, see the throttle should close and actually there is a stop that keeps the throttle from going all the way closed. There's a like a base idle setting that gives it just a tiny amount of air and that should be set at the factory and normally you shouldn't ever have to change it. And then the IAC system uh, with two coils of wire here um, moves the pintle back and forth uh, in order to bring enough airflow so that the engine can idle. And normally, um, fully closed would be zero counts, and fully open is 145, at least on my tuned port. And I kind of think that's a common number uh, that that the IAX run between zero and 145. So if you're sitting at with the engine off and powered up, at least on my car, you'll see that the IAC is sitting at 145 when the engine is not running. And so that when you crank the engine, it starts at 145 and as soon as the engine fires up, then this IAC pinhole extends and the, the numbers, the counts will reduce. Uh, to bring the idle speed down to control where it belongs. And there's an indication that they think 50 counts at hot idle in neutral is about right for this car. And I think that's about where my tuned port ought to be as well. But with the 10K mode, um, in order to get data, uh, it raises the idle speed to about 1100 and so I never get the counts below about 70 or 80 and probably if I was running you know at 600 rpm where I belonged it would probably be sitting down on 50. Now this is the diagnostic chart that goes with that picture and there is an IAC tester that's available most of us don't have those so it'll be a little bit difficult um, but there is a tester that will that you can use to manually extend or retract the IAC valve, and in in this case, assuming we don't have it, uh, you have to do some things to to kind of watch and infer whether it's doing what it's supposed to do. So down here in this diagnostic aids section. It says slow or unstable or fast idle can be caused by a non-IAC system problem that the IAC can't overcome. So if, if the idle speed is too low, IAC counts may be over 60, maybe a lot over 60, and it's not able to bring the speed up. Or if the idle speed is too high, as it is in this particular question, let's say you know if the, if the um, commanded speed should be 600 and it's 800, then the IAC should be going to zero or be near zero, trying to bring it back down again. So things that it can't handle, things that the IAC can't control, if idle is too high, you, you may very well have a vacuum leak or a binding of the throttle blade or the throttle linkage or cable that's not letting it come all the way back. You also could have system too lean or system too rich. In this case, that seems a little bit odd because it idles okay, but you put it in gear and it goes too high. Seems a little strange, but uh, 
but it's worth looking at and and you can take a look at whether uh, oxygen sensor voltages, you know, whether, whether your enclosed loop, whether O2 sensors correct. Uh, throttle body, you can pull the IAC and, and make sure there isn't anything in the in the bore. Electrical connections correct. PCV valve. This is one a lot of people don't look at. Is PCV valves can get fouled and may not close off or may not open, and if they don't uh, modulate correctly, they can look like a vacuum leak. So this is the, the flow chart that goes along with those previous instructions. And again, it's, it's really based around using the IAC tool. Um, but again, there may be some clues in here as to um, you know, making sure that it responds correctly. You can come down here and check IAC resistance um, and make sure the circuits are, are correct and that the passages are correct. There's one more here that I'd like to look at is, you know, here's the basic IAC description. It's controlled by the ECM, sending voltage pulses out to the pintle to cause it to move in or out a given number of steps given number of counts. Engine idle is based on total airflow, based on pintle position, PCV flow, throttle valve opening, and calibrated vacuum uh, loss through accessories like, uh, oh, like canister purge, or may, there may be some others. So it's, it's trying to control to a level. There's a minimum idle rate set with a stop screw that with that minimum error rate, you ought to be running at a calibrated number of steps, which they've suggested is somewhere around 50-ish. Now they point you to rough, unstable, or incorrect idle. This is kind of the, these are the general, um, general pieces. They want you to do some visual checks. I, I should bring that up here in a minute, but let me, let me uh, go through this. Um, you know, oxygen sensor, TPS, they really want to make sure that you're, you know, with the scan tool or with WinALDL, that the um, TPS is correct. Because uh, if the TPS is off, you may get a, a, an idle speed that you don't expect. Here's my backing up for a minute. Here's the preliminary checks. And one was the diagnostic circuit check that I already mentioned. And here's the, you know, vacuum hoses for any leaks or improper connections, air leaks at the throttle body or intake, any ignition issues, wiring problems, and so forth, ECM uh, wiring issues. I don't know in this case that there are any of those, but you, you don't want to forget about these because it certainly can uh, catch you. So idle chart two is to make sure whether things are rich or lean. And in, uh, in the win ALDL, uh, you can look at the block learn data. And I think the goal of block learn is normally to be around 128. So if you're way off of 128 on one side or the other, uh, you may have an issue. And if you do it long enough, you'll set a code for rich or lean. But these OBD1 diagnostics, uh, you have to be rich or lean. You have to be out for a considerable distance for a long time, uh, often before it'll pick it up. So here's ignition system information, you know, making sure that, um, that that's correct, the timing's correct. Um, IAC valve. If the system voltage is too low or too high, the IAC valve will not operate properly. Um, already, we looked at chart C2, that's a little bit earlier. Um, ECM ground, um, park neutral switch circuit. Like, this is another one that we can pick up with WinALDL. I'll show you that in just a minute. Also wanna check your AC 
uh, air conditioning system operation if you have air conditioning because uh, air conditioning requests will change idle speed also. And so it could be as simple as having a, a defective switch on the air conditioning. Um, EGR operation, battery, uh, there is, um, you know, there can be issues if the system voltage changes, the ECM will sometimes adjust IAC to try to compensate for the fact that if your voltage is fluctuating, the uh, fuel pump, fuel pressure may be an issue. Again, PCV valve, uh, vacuum leaks. Now this isn't my best chart. This is from my previous video on setting up WinAL, WinALDL. And so this is off of my car. And each model year may have slightly different parameters. Uh, but you know, here you can see this line item says IAC. Raw was 104, converted was 104. You want to, typically you want to use this converted column uh, for accurate data. Uh, what I had learned on the coolant temp is uh, my scan tool reports something like that 71. It doesn't report the converted data, and the converted data was actually the accurate one. So in any case, um, IAC is at 104. Now you go, wow, why, that's pretty high. Well, my idle speed's at 1150, almost 1200, and in this particular case, coolant temp is 55. The engine's only been running maybe mm, two minutes or so when I took this data, and and what you would see is uh, this 104 drops and drops and drops as the engine warms up uh, down into the 80s at least, even with the uh, high RPM. Uh, here's TPS, and you can see it in volts. Um, here's INT, that's the integrator. There's 128 showing. Uh, block learn is 128. Um, let's see, short, short term and long term fuel trims. Um, there's the mass airflow in my case. There's the pulse width. B, uh, BPW is the pulse width on the injectors. Uh, LV8 is a load signal that would affect um, things like how much EGR that you have. So this is kind of the, this is the column of data you would want to look at and say, hey, you know, where's my IAC? It, um, you know, in, in this case, you know, is, do, you, do you get down to 50 when the car's warmed up in, in neutral? And then where does it go when you drop it into gear? Does it, um, does it go up considerably? Or does it go down to zero, which would kind of indicate that it's trying to bring it down and can't? Um, second thing, on WinALDL, there's a second screen that you need to go here that's called flag data instead of sensor data. And in my car, see, I need to run this ALDL mode with the 10K going. And again, this is... Uh, when I took this data, it's it's fairly, um, it hasn't warmed up yet. So it's showing rich because it, it's not in the closed loop yet. Um, low battery, it doesn't have low battery, but it would inhibit the IAC. Um, over here, air conditioning is not requested, which would say that the AC switch is off. Uh, park neutral. So if you had a problem, you know, with the park neutral switch, uh, and you drop, if you dropped it into gear and it was still showing part neutral with a check on it, you know, that would be an issue. And then you, again, you can see your solenoids here. So next step for the, you know, to answer this question of how do I troubleshoot the idle is I would be digging in and looking at these things really close, looking at these flags to see if they're normal looking at the data to see if it's normal. Um, we had, in, in comparing notes, we had talked about uh, TV cables, a throttle valve cable for the transmission, 
And the suggestion was that at least for a trial, you might want to disconnect the cable and make sure that the cable is not holding the throttle off idle. And then make sure that the cable is properly adjusted. And the proper adjustment is that, you know, you go from, there's, it's in the service manual how to do it, um, but you have, to, you have to go from closed throttle and there's a button that you push to release the tension on the cable. You, it start at zero throttle and you stroke it to wide open and then the ratchet should pull on out. And, and essentially what you do is you set the cable position at, you know, w- with the throttle rotated all the way to wide open. And once you've done that, it should be good. I mean, I'm giving you a rough description. I'd say is take a look at the manuals and make sure that that, that makes sense. Okay. Um, but the, the cable setting is strictly based on uh, going from an idle throttle position to a wide open throttle throttle position and stroking the cable that many millimeters and, and getting it set. Well, there's one more topic here I'd like to address before I finish uh, that I'm not sure is, is um, addressed totally, and that's ignition timing. Um, one of the things that could really cause your idle to be off is if you get all through this and the IAC looks like it's okay, uh, these, this is an electronic spark timing engine, and the ECM sets that timing uh, based on different sensors. Um, part one would be, you know, what is your timing, crankshaft timing, base ignition timing? And I know it varies between throttle body and port injected. But that really isn't important. Um, that point is chosen mostly to make sure the engine runs and starts correctly when you don't have um, electronic spark timing adjusting it. It's just the base point. And your ECM has no idea where that is. So if, if you chose to set it at four instead of zero, uh, the ECM wouldn't know. It would affect how your engine runs, but it wouldn't change anything in the control system. Uh, second item then is if for some reason uh, you have something in the electronic spark timing circuit that isn't working correctly uh, that causes ignition timing to shift like in this particular case we've been talking about a, a difference of what happens between going from neutral into drive for example uh, you know the spark timing can cause idle speed if it's over advanced it will cause idle speed to be high if it's under advanced if it's retarded it'll it can cause idle to be too low and the iac will attempt to adjust but may not be able to adjust fully and you know those issues come in it goes into diagnostics of the ignition system but you know i'm just going to say you could have a bad ignition module that isn't properly responding uh, to what the ECM commands. Uh, you could have a knock sensor knock module uh, that's not working correctly or the wiring not correct. That would typically cause you to be retarded, but it's possible you could be you know retarded in neutral and uh, corrected in gear. So anyway, as I finish here, I, I would uh, I would be looking really hard, uh, go through all these diagnostics and then be looking really hard at the uh, timing. Put you know put a timing light on the system and see if it varies between uh, being in neutral and being in gear. It probably will be different between the two states uh, because the ECM. You know I don't know what the what the maps look like for the timing curve, but uh, it might be another clue to. Uh, determining why the idle speed uh, doesn't drop in where you expect it to be. Well, okay, so that's my story from the screen grabs and, and my best explanation. Uh, I'm not sure whether this will fix the problem, but maybe it gives some guidance where, where to look, and uh, I hope it's of some assistance. That's all for now.